Hey folks, welcome to Life of Mike. I have just finished wrapping up an episode of the bushcraft camp and I thought I'd do a little short kind of bushcraft tip survival skill uh, just in one episode that might be useful for you guys out there. And what we're going to make today is a spring pole snare. Now it's essentially using a green sapling or a green tree that's nice and flexible with a bit of uh, cordage tied to it. Could be paracord, could be bank line. Uh, bank line's a little bit better because it's thinner and it's easier to tie. Down to a trigger stick, which is pinned under a loop, and then you've got a little bait stick and a snare at the end. Now, I'm just showing you as a demonstration and I'll pull up the trap and, and destroy it afterwards. Um, but in other places around the world, you need to check your laws and your bylaws. Uh, it can be legal to do this sort of trap. And in a survival situation, it's something, it's a skill worth knowing. So this is a nice bendy sapling lots of spring to it. The only thing with doing this type of trap I've found is that when you've got a sapling with loads of leaves on it, it adds a lot of resistance when it wants to spring up, so it doesn't really spring up very quickly. So what I tend to do, and because this is my own woodland and this is a small sapling, I have the main kind of coppice tree behind me, this, should, this is actually gonna benefit the woodland. I'm gonna cut this sapling low, fairly low down. leaving a couple of inches for new growth next year. And then I'm just gonna remove some leaves. About, it doesn't matter what height, but this is about five and a half, six feet. And now I can put a lot more tension on this because there's no leaves, there's no kind of flopping bit, flappy bit at the end. And that, if you look, you can almost hear it. That's what I want. So now I can place my trap anywhere. That's the first component for my hooped section. I'm actually going to use the tip of the, the tree that I've just cut, the sapling, and you can see there's already a natural bend there. So if I just remove some of these leaves, I only really need about that, that much. And then I'm going to put a point on each end, like that. I've got a point here, and then a point there. Essentially that is going to, I'm going to bend that like so. And that's gonna go in the ground like that. So that's two components off the same tree already. And in fact, we'll get the, set, the third component as well. Looking for a real thin section now. There. And now I don't want this to be a point. I just want this to be flat. And that is my bait stick. Now I'm gonna make the trigger. I need the trigger stick. And actually, I'm still gonna use the same sapling. So I'm just gonna remove a couple of these branches there. Doesn't need to be a big section. Right. right there. There's my trigger stick. And there's all my components, that's everything. There's my components. The spring pole, the trigger stick, the hooped stick, which is going to lock the trigger in place, the bait stick, and some bank line. First things first, I'm just going to bend and see which way this sapling wants to bend naturally and use that natural bend. And then I'm just going to stick it in the ground. There we go. That's got some good tension you can see there. Really good tension and a nice spring to it. Now, I'm gonna tie some bank line to the top. I use the Arbor Knot because it's just a really quick one to, and it generally stays really secure. But you can use any knot that you wish and that you know will stay in place. Loads of tension, that's, that's not going anywhere. So now, I'm gonna bring and bend this pole over, so there's lots of good tension to it. And I'm just gonna mark where I'm gonna do this loop. Stick this loop in the ground, about there. Try not to snap it, but it's green so it shouldn't snap. Okay. There's my loop stuck in the ground nice and solid. The bank line is gonna come under here on the, the stick because this stick's gonna get wrapped with this cordage, so I've still got tension, 
I'm just marking. Now I can come, I'm going to wrap this cord around because that's the distance I want the trigger stick. But I'm rather than try and tie it under tension now, I'm just going to relax, come back up and finish it up here. I just throw in a couple of half hitches. Um, you know, you can do all sorts of knots to lock it off. You can do an adjustable knot if you want, which is probably easier. But basically you want it so that as you're pulling on the pole, this isn't unravelling really fast. So if it's not unravelling, then you're ready to go. It's probably going to hold. There's the snare just here. If I put my hand in there and pull, it cinches down tight on my hand and a stick and it's impossible to kind of pull out of it. Undergoes the trigger stick. This bait stick is essentially stopping that falling, stopping it whipping back. And this bottom bit is to stop this bait stick getting stuck in the ground and it increases its sensitivity. So there's, there's reduced friction. If it was on the ground, there'd be a lot more friction. Here's the snare loop, or the, the sliding knot. Just make the loop a bit bigger. I'm gonna make sure that knot, the base of it is over there and then spread the snare around. Now it's loaded, so keep the face out the way. There's my sliding loop or the snare. Animal comes in to investigate. It just knocks the bait stick and then that slides shut. Now that was the trigger going off. It slid shut and that's now snared. So that as that animal tries to go, it can't get rid of that loop because it's locked on. Here's the components. There's the spring pole tied to bank line there, follow the line down, here's the setup, there's the hoop, there's the hoop in the ground, the trigger stick, which is actually not sort of level, but there's the bait stick, a piece of bark or a stone to stop it going through, and there's my snare loop with the knot up at the top. Well, here comes the animal, it snuffles in around, knocks the bait stick, and it pulls tight. If you see that, that's now tight, and it's almost like a fishing rod, wherever that, that bends. That stick is snared shut. And the great thing is, is it's portable because all you need to do is pull these out the ground, pull that out the ground, take the bark with you, and there you have your full kit of your snare trap. And there you go, that is how to make a spring pole snare trap. Thanks very much for watching, guys, really appreciate it. Please hit the subscribe button, share the videos with your mates, and I'll catch you soon in another episode of Life of Mike. Cheers.